Do you need something? Let's build it! Welcome to the 10th part of the Waterless Sailing Canoe building series. Um, this part will be a little special one because we are not actually going to work on the boat itself, but we are going to build the spars. So the rudder, the rudder box, the daggerboard, the mast. So last time when I had a little bit of epoxy left, I started gluing up the rudder casing. We learn if you use like little wooden bars to spread out the load of your clamps, wrap them in some like tape or something or plastic bag because if the epoxy leaks out of your gluing surface they will just glue onto it and it's a mess to get rid of it. We'll sand the inner part of the roller box, glue it to the outer part. Here, just sand it and smooth because after this is glued together, oops, like this, won't be able to reach inside there anymore. I also rounded these corners here slightly a little bit by hand. So the rudder boxing has two coats of epoxy. It's nice and clear and solid, no wood anymore. Um, so I'm going to sand these quickly and then coat them again and then put the spacer in between and clamp everything together. Just glued in place the rudder box spindle so you can actually steer the rudder box afterwards. Going to let it dry, fill the edges, sand it, epoxy it, sand it, varnish it and then it's done. So you probably already saw me gluing the daggerboard and the rudder together. Both of these have been two separate panels, just epoxied together. Um, looking pretty messy, but I have to send them anyways. So as you can see, they are already a little bit pre-shaped uh, in the CNC mill. And now I'm just going to take my belt sander and give them a nice and round shape. Daggerboard and rudder are done. Finally finished sanding. Probably a kilo heavier right now because I'm full of dust. <coughs> and it's actually quite a lot of dust in the room here. I have to let some air in. But they are all looking nice and good and sanded. I just found out that I did a little mistake with the foils, so with the rudder and the daggerboard. If you remember, there were like these little already cutouts along the side, which I thought were just in order so you don't have to take out that much of material when you shape them. The edge here is just wood, and if I hit anything with this edge of wood, the wood will splinter and water will enter the wood and the daggerboard won't be lasting very long, I guess. In the kit they had a pretty good idea, which I didn't read carefully enough. It was intended to be glued the other way around so you have these rabbits on the inside like you can see here and the space that you have right there I have been supposed to fill up with epoxy so the edge you have here right now would be thickened epoxy and not wood and if you hit anything with thickened epoxy the thickened epoxy just splits away or cracks a little bit or whatever but that's not a problem because water cannot enter into the thickened epoxy because it's it's plastic. 
Um, so that's a pretty good idea they had with the kit. It's good that I read this now and not before I glued all of this together, but it will work somehow. Um, the next step will be to wrap fiberglass over the surfaces and I will just try to take fiberglass over the edges as well so there's at least a little bit of protection. Just teaches me again to read the instructions more carefully. Anyhow, um, so I'm going to add fiberglass now and start shaping the mast as well after I read the instructions again for the mast. sides of fiberglass are on the daggerboard and the rudder. Just trimmed it away with a knife, going to sand it and then going to wrap around some fiberglass over the edge. Some super thin fiberglass for the leading edge of the dagger board. Quickly took the rudder and the rudder box and put them into one another and as you can see the holes don't fully line up uh, ain't too much of a problem I put in quite a thick coat of epoxy into here so I just have to take out like a little bit more of the space here until these two holes line up properly This is now basically ready for paint. Just gonna put it apart, start um, the mast, and then I'm going to paint everything together so I only have the smell in the house once. So, coming to the mast, that's the page with all of the measurements, and as you can see, the main boom and yard, the main mast, and the aft yard and boom are all tapered so the end of the mast is going to be thinner than the start uh, the bottom of the mast. I already drew all of this out and sketched it onto the mast. So I think I'm going to start with an electric plane, just doing the rough bits and then going to hand plane it, hand sand it, or maybe take my, my small belt sander, the, the portable one. Um, haven't never done this. It's the first wooden mast I built. The paper jet mast is carbon and aluminum. I don't know. I have to learn this, but I guess I will figure it out. That sucks. Another one. Ah, there we go. That's what I'm searching. <laughs> Well, 
that work better than I thought it would. I have quite a good electric plane where you can adjust how much it should take away. And I just started to stroke at the beginning at like a fifth of a millimeter and then as I went alongside the mast I just turned the wheel to like three millimeters and therefore I could quite get the shape right. So that was one side of the main mast. Going to flip it around to the opposite side and then I'm going to draw the shape again on the other two sides, take this out as well and then clean up already looks like a mess. Just made myself these little tools. I'm going to attach these to my saw horses like that, and then I am able to put the mast parts into there like this, so I can more easily round them. So just take the electric plane and take off a far bit over the top here. It's looking good. Just going to screw them in place and then start making noise again. First coat of primer on the daggerboard and the rudder box. Going to wait until this is dry, sand it, put on more primer and then put on the vanish and then they are done. Nice. It's the final day of our making in the spars. Laid everything out in my garage, everything's cleaned and de-dusted. So we yeah, are going to mix some varnish and then finish this up. two coats on everything. The next day, all the paint is dried, I flipped the masts over, flipped the rudder over, so everything's ready for the second coat of clear coat. That's the spray vanish I'm going to use. As you can see, it's the same like I have to mix and to roll. Never worked with this, so this is a new one for me too. It says immediately before you use it, you have to take this red cap and press it down into there. I guess then it's going to mix because it's two components. I'll see. All of 
Oops, bars are completely vanished. Used for the last coat this spray paint. Um, it worked pretty well. Uh, used the entire bottle for one coat on the masts. So they don't last very long and they are quite expensive. So I don't know yet if I'm going to use them more often in the future, but it was worth a try. So these are done. Just sitting here waiting for the hardware to arrive so I can screw them on. The rest of the spars is sitting inside of the boat, so the rudder, daggerboard, all of that stuff. They are all finished and as you already can see because I showed it, the boat is actually finished as well because I varnished all of it together so I don't have to mix in the paint multiple times. But how I completely finished the boat you will see in the next episode. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this one and see you in two weekends. Oh, and as always, like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Bye!